Can you really improve the performance of your eGPU in macOS by simply plugging in a second monitor? This sounds completely crazy. So let's check it out and see if it works. So I've got a Razer Core X eGPU enclosure with an AMD RX 5700 XT graphics card in it. And I use it with my MacBook Pro and my 2013 Mac Pro via a Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter. I'm running macOS Catalina on both of these machines. Of course, regular viewers of the channel already know this because I've posted a few videos on my setup. And I've had a few comments telling me that you can get better eGPU performance by simply plugging in a second monitor. This doesn't seem to make any logical sense. How can you speed up a graphics card by simply plugging in an additional display? Let's do some tests and I'll answer that question as we go. My 5700 XT has two DisplayPort and two HDMI outputs, and I currently just use the first HDMI output. So let's start with just one monitor plugged into that output. I ran a Geekbench 5 compute test with Apple's Metal Framework, and I got a score of 35,572. Now this is low for a 5700 XT. The card is capable of hitting scores closer to 70,000. I've tested my eGPU with this benchmark a number of times, and I've found a big variety in the results that I get. I've had as low as 18,000 and even as high as 50,000, but mostly it does sit around the 33 to 35,000 mark. But this huge variance led me to conclude that the macOS drivers for this RDNA architecture are just not properly optimized yet, uh, which I've said before in other videos. So I'm interested to see what happens if we plug a second monitor into DisplayPort 1 and run that benchmark again. The answer is that it scores 68,531. That's incredible. And I checked this result a few times just to make sure it wasn't an anomaly. Uh, then I figured I'd see if there's any difference by using the different ports. So I plugged the main display into DisplayPort 2 and it got even faster, 70,186. For completeness, I also tested the other combinations. If you use both HDMI ports together, you get 68495. HDMI 2 with DisplayPort 1, that was 67044. And HDMI 2 with DisplayPort 2 is 67109. So the sweet spot for me is HDMI 1 with DisplayPort 2. Now, how is it that plugging in a second display would double the performance? Well, the simple answer is that it isn't. What we're actually seeing is just the normal performance of the card. And what I've been suffering for the past six months is only being able to access half of that performance. So I'm putting this down to Apple's drivers, but that doesn't make sense either. The 2019 Mac Pro can be specced with a 5700 GPU. So you would assume that Apple have fixed the problem. I mean, I assume that GPU does work properly. I mean, it would be pretty gutting to drop that much money on a Mac Pro to find that you're only getting half the available performance from your graphics card. Now, of course, in my situation, I'm using the eGPU over Thunderbolt 2 with the 2013 Mac Pro, and that's not something that Apple officially supports. So could this be something specific to that setup? Well, I tried the same benchmark on a 15-inch MacBook Pro, and it scored 70,472. So I then went and tried it on a 13-inch MacBook Pro, and then I got 61,466. And I checked that 13-inch result a few times, but yes, the newer Thunderbolt 3 equipped MacBook Pro 13-inch cannot get the same performance out of the eGPU as the older Thunderbolt 2 equipped Mac Pro. Why? Uh, well, I'm not completely sure, but the Mac Pro has got 64 gigs of RAM and the 15-inch MacBook Pro I used has got 32 gigs of RAM whereas the 13-inch only has 16, so could that be the reason? Either way, performance is again pretty much doubled on these MacBook Pros, so it must be a software bug, either with the macOS drivers or with Geekbench 5. Now we could actually rule out Geekbench if we see performance gains in other applications, and since I just did a video with a Final Cut Pro performance test, I've already got a bunch of data for the Mac Pro and the 13-inch MacBook Pro. So I can rerun the same test, but with a second monitor plugged into the eGPU. The test features two timelines, each being one minute long. The first is made up of ProRes 422 footage from my Blackmagic camera, recorded at 600 megabits per second. And the second timeline is H.264 footage from my Panasonic G9 at 150 megabits per second. So I tested the background render time for the entire timeline, and then I tested the output render time, converting the footage back into H.264 format. 
On the ProRes timeline, the Mac Pro did the background render in 15 seconds and the final render in 40 seconds when I did the original test. But with the second monitor plugged in, the background render takes 15 seconds. But the final render completed in 20 seconds. And for the H.264 timeline, where the Mac Pro originally managed 1 minute 24 for the background render and 44 seconds for the final render, now with that second monitor plugged into the eGPU, the background render drops to 56 seconds and the final render completes in 17 seconds. Right, that is a dramatic improvement. And it clearly shows that it's not Geekbench 5 misreporting figures. This weird bug must exist within macOS. For good measure, I reran the tests on the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Previously, with that ProRes timeline, it took 47 seconds to do the background render and 39 seconds for the final render. We got a small improvement with the second display plugged in. The background render drops to 43 seconds. But that final render, again, completes in just 16 seconds. And it's the same story with the H.264 timeline. Previously, 20 seconds for background and 41 seconds for final render. It now does the background render in 15 seconds and the final render in 13 seconds. So there you have it. If you're running an eGPU with a 5700 XT graphics card on macOS, plug in a second display and your eGPU will actually perform as it should. But what if you don't have a spare display kicking around? Well, you can buy what's known as a headless display, and these typically cost $10 or less on Amazon, and you can get them in both the HDMI and DisplayPort form factor. Now, I've ordered one, and I'll post an update video once I've tested it. A couple of obvious questions arise. Firstly, why haven't Apple fixed this? They absolutely know that the issue exists, because there are plenty of forums with folks discussing this. I don't have a clear answer to that question, obviously. Uh, Apple does what it likes, but they do seem to be moving away from pushing eGPU as a solution, and I'm not sure it's a priority for them. Now, that is a talking point for another video. Uh, the second question that arises is whether or not this issue is specific to the 5700 XT. Are there any other graphics cards which exhibit this behavior? So, if you have an eGPU with a graphics card in, and you feel up to doing a bit of testing, uh, I'd be really interested to hear your results. And that's all for this video. I hope you found it useful. Uh, thanks very much to all of the people that commented on my previous videos and alerted me to this particular issue. Uh, it's given my Mac Pro a new lease of life, um, which considering the recent announcements from Apple is probably a good thing. Uh, my computer needs to last me a little bit longer yet. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this content, and maybe I did enough to earn a thumbs up, or a thumbs down if that's your thing. In any case, I'll see you next time for some more geekery.